everybody. Um, hi, Jessica. I haven't seen you in a day and an age. I'm so excited that you're here tonight. Hi. And Hello. I'm trying to change. How are you? Oh my God. How are you doing? This is so exciting. I haven't seen you in so long. How how have you been holding up? Get off the camera. Um, okay, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Hey Jess, how are you? Hello, Amy. Nice to see you. You see who's it next to me? Well, not Rob, but Liz is on too. Oh, and look who just heard you from the other room. Look, hi Tori. <laughs> on cue. <laughs> Elizabeth is with us too, but oh, I'm good. Here. Hi, Elizabeth. So, so Liz, I don't, I don't think I know you at all. You are, you are muted right now. But you are. I'm from Denmark originally, and your name is spelled like Liz in Denmark, oh, not with a okay. D, but an S. Oh, did I? I, you know what? I. That's only because I clicked the wrong letter. <laughs> it is supposed to be. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Oh. Oh well, I thought I maybe had. But I could, I should keep it. Maybe I should uh, change it up a little. <laughs> I thought I had a I had a fellow a fellow Dane with a Vietnamese last name. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, so so I don't know if you know me. I'm Lada. I'm the director of the library. Um. And it gives me, you know what? Thank you so much for being part of our community during this this awful, awful year where we can only do things online. And Jessica, I think you're you're echoing this more than so many other people. Um, thank you for being with us. Um, I am thrilled to be able to do this one more time uh, at the end of the year. I hope 2021 is going to be uh, an improvement on 2020. Um, I don't want to jinx anything, but that would be nice. Um, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome Vicki Stafford. Uh, she's a uh, local art educator and um, somebody who really knows her stuff. And uh, Vicki's been working with the library for, for, for some time to do programs and we do the, the takeaway kits. Um, and, you know, Take it away, Vicky. Um, thank you for being here. I'm and Merry, Merry Holidays. I can I say Christmas? Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, everything. Stay safe, stay well, and and let's meet each other in a happier new year. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I can unpin myself. So Hi everybody, as I said, I'm Vicki Stafford. I'm a local artist. Uh, I live and work in Boonton. Um, I recently graduated uh, from William Patterson University. Uh, even though I recently got my degree, I've actually been uh, working as an artist for almost 20 years now. I figured it was time to make it official. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I did a candle class and the response was so overwhelming that uh, here we are now with your smiling faces and we're going to do candles, uh, as Lassa and I were saying, uh, 102. Um, last time when we worked with candles, I had everybody just do a very simple pour candle, but I got a lot of questions about um, how to do things, spice it up, make scented candles. So tonight, um, instead of decorating jars, you'll notice your kits are probably a little more simple than what you might have expected, but there is a wonderful little bottle, little brown bottle in there of uh, scented essential oils that I mixed up for you. It's my favorite that I use at home. It's my um, vanilla orange spice, and it's just such a warm, wonderful smell this time of year. It's a really great way to kind of like open up, relax, and the uh, spice is clove, which is actually really good as a uh, antifungal and uh, antiviral in the air. So, you know, might not do a lot as a candle, but you know, uh, any, any little bit is great. And um, what's nice about the soy candles that we're gonna be making this evening is that soy candles can uh, actually be used as lotion candles. Their uh, melting point is so low that you can actually pour off a little bit of the uh, warm wax right from with the, the flame on and rub it into uh, your hands, cuticles, 
fingertips, like in between all those spots that get chapped and you'll feel uh, an instant difference. It absorbs really quickly. And it's vegan, which is nice. You know, I know that a lot of people are very, very you know, conscientious about making sure that they're, you know, putting the right kinds of products on their bodies and staying as clean as possible. And so this is a really great way to make a beautiful gift for somebody and to, to really like, send forth that, uh, that expression to them about how much you care about their health. So without further ado, um, if you haven't already set up your double boiler, I cheated a little bit tonight since uh, I've done these so many times. I have mine directly on the hot plate, but I'm having to babysit it a lot. So doing the double boiler is going to save you a lot of hassle. Um, and that's just literally putting your, your jar or your metal vessel uh, on top of the water bath. I included a photo of what that looks like in your kit. So your wax needs to melt very slowly. If you uh, have a little stirring stick or something, an old knife chopstick works really well. You can always give it a little, uh, little poke and a prod to help it along. Slow is better with soy wax. You don't want it to boil because it will discolor and uh, it can end up smelling funny if it burns. Um, so what we want to do though, if you have one, a lovely tool to have, and it doesn't cost too much if you're serious about making uh, a lot of candles, is to get yourself a candle thermometer. And these are really great. It's good to have something that's dedicated only to your wax products, you know, same way that you have just a meat thermometer or just a candy thermometer. Invest uh, the about $15 in just a candle thermometer. Um, for us, we want to make sure that in order to get the essential oil in and keep the smell, we don't want it to be more than 125 degrees Fahrenheit. But honestly, if we can keep it to about 120, that's even better. Because what happens is that essential oils have what we call a flash point. But because most of the industry doesn't really um, use them for this purpose, most candle makers, they like to have like these very like specialized kind of chemically blends. Um, they don't talk about flash points on your essential oil labels. You're not going to generally find that anywhere. Um, so 120 degrees Fahrenheit is generally like that magic number get your scent, it's not gonna evaporate off the moment it hits the hot wax, and uh, you'll get the best like permeation into all the wax molecules. Uh, while we're waiting for our wax to finish melting, I provided you guys with jars. Sorry this week, your ears are a little different than mine. So you got two jars, you have two sets of wicks in clips, and your wicks are um, nice and uh, Nice and tall, which I think is always easier. It's better to have to put something down later than to uh, find out that you have something that's too short to work with your vessel. And then there should be a couple of stickers in there as well. So what we're gonna do, your sticker goes onto the bottom of your wig clip here. And then find the center of your jar and place it. Make sure that you go as centered as possible so that when your uh, candle burns, your pool is gonna be centered. That way you won't have a lopsided candle and a big ridge of wax that builds up on one side. Once you have it in there, I generally, cause I'm a big baby, I don't like to push down with my fingernails. Just push down with like a chopstick or you know, butter knife. And make sure that it's really secure on there. These wick sticker uh, setups are meant to handle the wax and the heat, but if you don't get them really secure against the glass, the wax will creep up and you could end up with a floater. It kind of defeats the purpose then. So I am sure that most of you probably don't have a wax thermometer on hand. So the natural question in your mind right now is, well, Vicki, I'm only just getting into this. How am I supposed to do this? And so we're gonna do it visually. And it's not too, uh, too difficult. Once your wax is completely melted, you're gonna remove it from the heat. 
which mine is nice and melted. It's a very soft golden color. You can see if uh, I can get that for you guys to see. Ooh, we're moving up, we're moving over. It's got like a very gentle, gentle golden color to it. And you'll be able to smell. It's a very unmistakable smell, the smell of the wax. So once you, uh, you have it melted, what we're gonna do is just take it off the heat. Go ahead and move it from the heat and give it a couple of minutes, like five minutes. If you notice that it's starting to spin over, place it back on the heat. Um, this should start to set up at about 105 degrees, 110 degrees. So there's like a very small window between where it's melted and where uh, it'll set up again. That's the nice thing about soy wax, in fact, is that it is so, so easy to work with visually, even if you don't have any fancy equipment or thermometers. I also uh, tend to like it because it's easier to um, find it online, shipped up into those nice little flakes that I included for you. So you don't have to sit there and shave things out. Yeah, because that, that can get kind of tedious. And then like, you've got to have a set of cutting board and separate knives and so many extra things. And um, I don't know about you, but I hate having a lot of extra things around. It's just, if I can limit the number of extra special tools that I need to, to set aside in a kit, it's better, at least for me. But that's probably because I do a little bit of everything. And uh, yeah, so. I'm going to check my temperature as I can. And my wax is coming in at 120 degrees. Exactly. So with the amount of wax that I included for you guys, you'll be able to add that entire little brown bottle straight into your pot. I'm going to cheat. I have migraines, so I generally can't uh, go nearly as strong as I set up you guys to do. So I'm gonna add what I know will work for me. When we talk about adding scent to candles, there are a couple of things that we uh, talk about aside from the flash point. I'm go ahead and give it a little stir. You'll be able to smell it, it's really nice. And aside from the flash point, we wanna talk about the scent load for these candles. With a uh, candle scent load, there is just so much of the essential oil, any of these oil-based fragrances, that a candle can actually hold before we lose the structural stability of the wax. Um, this scent load actually varies depending on the type of material you're using. Um, today, I'm only going to talk about the scent loads for soy wax specifically. And for that, the max threshold for that is about 10%. I believe that I have that listed. That's about 30 ml per pound of wax. So three of those little bottles for every pound of chipped wax that you have. Um, after that, what happens is that the candle will actually, after it's made and set up, start to leach out and sweat all of this excess oil. And while that doesn't, it, it's unsightly, it's also really dangerous. And that's... Um, that's why I'm here to talk to you guys about it's better to underscent than overscent a candle. And if you see that your candle is sweating, do not light it. If you light it, you risk it combusting, possibly even exploding in the jar, which is not anything that we want. That's like the exact opposite of a, a relaxing aromatherapy experience. Um, so rule number one, don't overload. We can't just dump it in because it smells good. 
And rule number two, when it sets up, if it's sweating, we're gonna just le let it let it be, dab it with a paper towel, nice clean one, and give it a couple of hours and see if that sweat returns and keep repeating that process until it's not sweating anymore. That can take a couple of days, but it will leach out all that excess oil and become safe. So patience is your friend. All right, so once you're- so, I'm sorry, it, just, I have a quick question. When you say the sweating, is the, would that be at the top or along the side of the jar? Um, it'll be inside along the top. It'll create these weird little bubbly pools. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and also mine took a little bit of time to melt. So once it gets melted down, I remove it from the um, flame and then let it set for a minute. Yeah, let it sit for a minute. Let it let it come down in heat. Okay. You, you'll probably, once it's uh, completely melted, you're probably going to be at about 130, 135 degrees. And we want to let that drop down to um, about 125, 120, ideally. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Everybody, just let me know when you're there. If you need, need an extra minute, I have no problem giving extra time to, to people. I'm all yours this evening. So we're all melted. Do we pour the scent in or let it cool off a little? Um, let it cool off just a little bit. Yeah, okay. You want to make sure, like I said, that the, um, the temperature of it needs to be about 120 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. When it, the soy wax melts, you're going to get um, about a max temp of like 135. So take it off the heat, give it like five minutes, and then add your scent and mix slowly. If you notice it's starting to form a white skin on the top, that means that it got too cool and just warm it back up a little bit. One of the things I'm most grateful for is the internet. I uh, I hate doing a, a lot of math. <laughs> I didn't have a great math teacher in high school who who would uh, who taught me uh, how to use any of this in a practical sense. So I spent a very long time in my youth being math resistant. It wasn't until I started uh, started making things uh, for a living that I realized just how useful math is. But by that point, I had done the damage and. Every time I had to do the math, it felt like I was pull, pulling my own teeth out. Um, so I included in the, uh, the information that Lata posted in the chart, there are some really great um, resources, including a conversion chart for how many drops of essential oil comes out to a milliliter, a teaspoon, a tablespoon, and an ounce. Um, and a fragrance load, a scent load calculator, so that you can actually put in how much wax you have by weight and how much scent you are, are going to add for a soy candle. That way you're never left in the dark and you don't have to sit there and do any futzy math. I also included in that resource list some uh, really great candle making kits that I found on Amazon that uh, the price was really reasonable and uh, the inclusions in the kit were, were really great for somebody who's just starting out. Okay, so once your, uh, your candles are ready, you're gonna need to pour them. And this is a fairly straightforward process. When you pour a candle, you're actually not going to pour the entire thing at once. You're gonna do probably about 80%, I would say, of, uh, of what you would expect. So I wanna feel closer to the tip of the jar, but since I know that the candle is going to leach and contract around that, uh, that wick, I'm gonna give myself a little extra space here. What happens as the wax cools, it, it contracts and does some kind of funny things. I can show you here. You see, when you do your first pour, you end up with these little valleys and craggly spots. 
So you're gonna give your, your candle probably about an hour or so to cool before you're gonna be able to correct that. Because if you do it any sooner than that, the wax in the center of the candle hasn't solidified enough and you're gonna introduce more heat on top and it's just going to actually make the crags um, around this wick even worse. So patience is your friend here. Um, I actually poured this one yesterday and I'm gonna correct it now and I'm not gonna have any problems. So even if you forget it overnight and then come back the next day, it's totally fine. So just real quick to back up, the whole okay. jar of scent goes in? Yes, that whole jar of scent goes in with that whole bag of wax that I gave you. I already did all the math for you. Oh, no. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I figured I would spare you my pain. Thank you. I love the wicks that uh, I included in your kits. These, uh, these nice tall ones. These are actually um, cotton wicking that has been pre-coated with um, a wax that has a higher melt point so that obviously your pour doesn't affect it. The ones that I included with yours today um, have no metal in the pour. I am a fan though of the ones that have zinc in the pour. They're also really good. Don't, don't be afraid of the zinc poured ones. Um, zinc can be a really great way to get a nice even burn in your candle. So once you have your wax in, you want to try to center your wick as much as possible. That involves, you know, getting right over it and taking a look. But that part is, uh, is fairly simple. And then we just, like I said, want to set those aside. You'll notice that they start to um, actually uh, get kind of fuzzy uh, looking, uh, that beautiful uh, white color starts to set up pretty quick. If you notice when you're pouring candles that it looks like um, there's air or that the, um, the candle wax has shrunk away from your jar, um, which you can always try doing with your next pour. I'm not gonna shout over that. Uh, if you notice that after you've poured your candles that it looks like the uh, the wax is almost like pulled away a little bit from the inside, that can mean that you're, the room you're pouring in, the space is too cold, but the jars themselves are too cold. So you can always try warming them up a little bit. You could dip them in the, a water bath really, uh, really quick, or if you have a dishwasher and you've, uh, you run the dry cycle and they, they come out and they're nice and warm from the dryer, um, the dry cycle, that's really good too. You know, it just depends on the, the temperature of the room you're working in at any time and how cold the jar is. You obviously don't want the jar so hot that it hurts to touch or anything like that, but it, it can really help to uh, have a warm jar. Let's see, I have a tool here to make this a little easier in the next step. But I have a plex and I didn't want to leave anything sharp next to myself. So once your candle's set up, as I said, we've got these crags and valleys, and we're going to use something sharp. You could even use a fork, the tip of a steak knife. It's, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. And um, just gonna poke holes around your uh, candle wick. Anywhere where the, um, You've got those really deep valleys. Make sure you really get in there. And you can even poke around a little bit on the tops, going around outside. But you have all these nice little like holes here for the wax to seep in. And you're going to then take your wax that you've reheated. And you're going to very gently pour that on top. 
Do it slowly. Patience is your friend here. And then just give it a minute. And you'll notice that uh, any of the little chips and bits that uh, resulted from stabbing the top of the candle, they should start to slowly melt. And you'll notice that the wax starts to permeate in to all those holes. And as this sets up and dries, you're going to end up with a smooth top. And I can show you what that looks like. Just a moment. And here is a nice smooth top handle. As I said, you're always going to have when you're pouring in a jar, you'll get like these little shadows and it looks like air bubbles. And if uh, after the fact, one of the best ways to correct this is just to um, take like a hot cloth and give it a, a, a little warm hug or you can run it carefully under uh, some hot water. You just don't want water getting into the wax. So that's why I prefer giving it a, a little warm hug. And what that'll do is that will help to um, soften up the wax enough that it will uh, creep back towards the jar itself. But there's nothing wrong with your candle with that. If it contracts like that, and um, it's perfectly burnable and safe. I realized that was a lot of information. Does anybody have any uh, questions? So Vicki. Yes. <clears throat> this is Lada speaking. So yes. how long, how long does the, the, your molten candle as it were need to sit? Um, before you can uh, consider trying to finish off the top, you need generally um, in a room that's a, a comfortable temperature in the winter time, about an hour. Oh, just an hour? Just an hour for the top to set up enough that you can do the puncture and pour hot wax uh, on the top to settle it. Okay. Well, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah, if your room is chilly or you notice that your candle still seems a little sloshy and soggy, give it more time. There's, with candle making, rushing never never leads to anything good. So what happens if, you're, if your wick suddenly starts to sort of shift a little to, to a side? I, that, that was the one I was looking at. <laughs> yep. I keep moving around at the table and so it keeps doing that. There are some wonderful tools that are out there for uh, if you buy cotton wicking like this. Um, it's actually a almost like a T-shaped tool with different sets of holes in it and um, little grips so that you can set it right on top of your jar. And they, they make them in varying sizes so that you can um, center your wick. Or you can be really, really thrifty like me. And you can just take an old fashioned chopstick, sure. wrap it around and leave it to sit. All right, everybody is, is on, on mute right now. I would love to hear some <laughs> feedback from people. Me too, I love feedback. I've been doing this a long time. So I, I do it fast and I don't necessarily think about all of the nuances anymore. So no. if there's something that doesn't seem clear, I want to know so I can, uh, I can help you. We were having that same trouble. We were standing there holding the wax. So it was helpful to know we could lean it on something and walk away from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless I had my kids stand there for an hour, that would be nice, but I don't know. Oh, what a great idea. I love that one. Thank you. We'll see um, the <laughs> so, so who are your kids? So this, this is Tori, she's in kindergarten. And Hi, Amy. Nice to meet you. Tori. And then this is my son, Bob. He's a ninth grader. He's in high school. Oh, my goodness. Look at you guys. You picked and up you're a making candles. I love library. it. I love it. Thank you. And my and kids uh, are waiting for me to get home so we can make candles together, too, this evening. 
And and Jessica, what are what are you thinking? All good on your end? So we made the big mistake of combining our two kits to try to melt it. So it took forever to melt, but um, live and learn. So now we have it melted, and we just added the the oil. So we're going to pour it now. And I have my daughter Elizabeth like, come closer. Yeah, you know, that, that's the hard part when you, you melt a whole bunch. It, it feels like it takes forever. It just, uh, it becomes one of those cost benefit analyses. You know, do I want to pour a whole bunch of candles at once and then walk away and do something else and but have to sit here for a long time babysitting this wax? Or do I want to, you know, do a little bit at a time throughout the day? When I was growing up, my mom used to make candles. Oh, um, yeah? with all different containers and she used to dip them and do all these different things, but I never did it with her. So this is my first time. Oh, oh my good. goodness. How exciting. It's really yeah. fun that you're, uh, you're doing this now. It's, it's one of my so favorite did, activities. So Jessica, did your mom ever do the dipping candles? She did. Yeah. Growing up in Denmark, that's what we did too. It's so fun. Liz, it's fun to do it with my daughter. So, so how are you doing over there? I'm doing okay. Mine took a little while to melt as well. I think I had my double boiler a little too low, um, so I was trying to kind of catch up. But I think I'm good now. I just hope that I had it cool enough. But I think it was okay. As long as you're able okay. to smell that essential oil. Uh, as you, you've been pouring it, like you should be good because uh, like a, a scent burn off, like you, you're able to tell really quick because all of a sudden you, you have this nice smell and then it's just gone. So okay. as long as you're still getting that, that smell in the air of the orange and the clove, you're, you should yes. be good. Okay. Okay. So so do do any of you have any questions that you want to ask of, of, of Vicky? Because she is really the professional here. So I was just curious, what's your favorite scent to use? Is it this one or? Um, this is one of my favorite for the winter time. Um, in terms of like my all time favorite candle scent, I would say, honestly, I love rosemary and orange. Mm, nice. Yeah, Ro rosemary, um, I have migraines and rosemary is an amazing scent for, for helping with migraines. It's one of the few that it doesn't matter. Like. It, it doesn't bother me. So, so Vicky, question for you. Mm -hmm. what, can you just put like pieces of rosemary into the candle and then? You yeah, you can totally do that. There's, um, if that's uh, something everybody's interested in, I'm totally open to workshopping that. You can actually go around, um, pour a little bit of wax in, swat, like swish it around. Like they think about like making like chocolate shell or something dump the wax off so you just have a very thin coating and then you can press fresh herbs all around the oh bar. that would be so much and fun then, and then you i to really like boost that rosemary smell i would then also add rosemary oil and then you can pour that and they're beautiful and as long as the the herbs that you're using you know they're they're thin they've been well dried because you can't use anything that's that's really fresh and wet because again, that messes with the structure of the, the wax itself. Then you've got all this water being introduced in that could either make the, the candle too soupy altogether and never set up, or could cause some odd little pops and explosions uh, as the candle's burning as that water's trying to find ways to escape. Sure. So, so if you did that, would you then add like additional like oils to go with? Yes, yes, I would. I'd really want to maximize that rosemary smell. So, so I am thinking of just putting my my feet out there. A Valentine candle. What would you do for that? Rose. Oh. I love. Oh my god! Oil. And getting so dried rose fun. petals is so easy. And this is the time of year to order them. Because nobody's thinking about Valentine's Day too uh, too intensely yet, so you should be able to get them in bulk fairly affordably. All right, you're on. 
Um, <laughs> no, but but this could be. I can just see you know making a beautiful Valentine candy for somebody, a uh, Valentine candle for somebody, with with beautiful rose petals around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. You can also do them. Um, you need a you need a different type of paraffin for it. And obviously, you can do lotion candles, and I think personally, lotion candles on Valentine's Day is the most romantic thing you can come up with. Children. What do you mean? You, you spread them on yourself first before you burn them off. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. But you can also. Um, do a I'm sorry, candy. let's go back to that one. Explain lotion candles to me. Uh, I'm well, the soy candles can be used as lotion. <laughs> so, you know, you can make a very nice smelling lotion candle for, for Valentine's Day. I'm sure all the moms and dads need no more explanation than that. Okay. But, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm just going to not, not go there. Um, no, we're not going to go that route. We're not going to go that route. We're keeping this PG, PG. I, I, so, <laughs> so I was, I was just, um, you teachers out there, Jessica, anybody else who is, who's a teacher out there? Yes, we have, we have the uh, annual Valentine haiku coming up one more time. Um, and it's going to be love in the time of cholera, uh, in the time of COVID. Um, <laughs> So, so we'll be, we'll be sending, we'll be sending out to all of, all of the schools. Um, we have had such great response on the Valentine haikus that we've had before. So it's coming out again. Your list, did we do it last year or was that two years ago? I remember we did it. We did. I want to say two years ago. We yeah, two yeah. years ago, but, but. We what Elizabeth said too, two years ago. Yeah, so so we didn't do it last year, but we do it, did it the year before, and we are we are back with a Valentine haiku, and um, can't wait. Uh, I this is one of the most joyful experiences that I have every year. Well, not last year, of course, but um, because I remember last year, this year it was horrible. Um, so looking so much forward to, to having you guys participate. And I'm sorry, I sidetracked Vicky. Um, but it's so much fun to see what the kids come up with. And, you know, love in the time of COVID can either be your dog, can be your mom, it can be your anybody. So, so stay tuned. And sorry, I completely digressed, Vicky. And I love the idea of doing a rose-colored um, Valentine candle. I think that would be so much fun. I think it would be absolutely delightful. I would be happy to uh, to help everybody make such a a, a sweet candle. A correct, a, a beautiful thing like that. So, um, any more questions for Vicky? I have a question. This was great. Um, I ended up using like a measuring cup to pour because I didn't trust uh -huh. that to that. Like, do it. How do you get wax off the thing? See, the, the soy thankfully is very forgiving. Um, make sure you get as much of it out. Um, pop the, that measuring cup into the fridge or freezer overnight. And then with a butter knife, you can scrape it out and then just wash it in hot water and dawn. And oh. on dish soap, and you'll be fine. Oh, thank you. I was sitting there yeah. like scrubbing with my nail, and that wasn't a good idea. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, can we hear from the kids involved? Did did you guys have fun? Fun, Troy. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. Well, say thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us. This was, this was, you know, thank you, Vicky. Um, if anybody, if nobody has any more questions, I think we are, we, we are done for tonight. And, and I want to say thank you so much for being here. And again, 
you know, looking forward to seeing you in 2021. And thank you for having, hanging in there with our library during this year. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You thank guys you. have it really been a lot of fun. Take care. Everybody. Really been going way over and beyond. So thank you for doing that for the community. You're welcome. Bye. Uh, yeah. Our pleasure. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.